So in today's video, we've got a great question that was sent to me by Matt Middleton, who's a long-term subscriber of the channel. So thanks a lot, Matt, for the support. And he gave me an excellent question about when you're dead straight on a, a green like this and you want to screw back just a small amount, so you're trying to be very precise so you get nicely onto the brown, how do you go about hitting that shot? Because you've only got a very small window to land nicely on the brown. So in this video, we're going to have a look at how we can play those shots and have a think about sometimes if there's some alternative shots that we can pick as well. Okay, so you can see here that I've finished dead straight on this green and I need to bring the white back just a little bit so that we've got a shot on that brown to the opposite corner. Now, the first thing to think about on these shots is that actually, if we were to play a pure stun shot, the white is actually already just behind that green slightly. So that shows you that actually we need to bring the white back even less than you might initially think. So we've already got that little bit of distance because the white's gonna make that contact point on the green. And then we probably only want to bring that white back just about one more ball roll. So this is what I'm trying to do to leave myself good on that brown. I'm down on the shot and I'm trying to just bring it back just a fraction like that to leave it good on the brown. But it's actually very difficult to control. So let's have a look at the ways that we can think about trying to control that white more effectively. Now the first thing to think about is that we can play this shot as a screw shot. So you're thinking, okay, I'm nice and straight on the green, I want the white to come back, that means I've got to hit the bottom of the white, play the shot as a screw shot to get the white to come backwards. Now that's a little bit difficult if you play it as a pure screw shot because the power is so critical that if you hit it slightly too hard you'll come back too far and if you hit it right at the bottom but don't hit it hard enough you won't screw the white back enough. So it's, it's a shot where you're a little bit tentative, you're a little bit worried about underdoing it and you're also worried about overdoing it. So if I play this as a, a pure screw shot first, you'll see that if I go right at the bottom of the white and then I try and get the power right, it's very easy to slightly overdo it like that. So I've hit it with slightly too much power there. So if I get this green out again, let's have another look at that. So if I put the white back on this spot here so we're nice and straight, so let's try that once more. Let's try a pure screw shot. And I'm going to hit it a little bit softer this time so that I'll try and not bring it back as far. So, And you can see that time now that I've done exactly what I talked about. Now I've gone the other way. I've hit it a little bit softer and I've actually underdone it. I haven't quite come back far enough there. So let's have a look at what we could do instead. What about if we hit slightly higher on the white so it's not a pure screw shot now. We're going just very slightly higher and that will generate less spin and allow us to hit slightly more positively. So the danger on this shot, if you play it as a pure screw shot, is that you're scared of hitting it too hard, and you're also scared of underdoing it like we've just looked at. So if we go, instead of right at the bottom of the white, just come up on the white just a little bit more, and then that allows me to hit it nice and positively without generating as much backspin on the white. So I'm bringing up my Q-tip a little bit, not quite hitting as low, and I should be able to hit it a bit more positively. And you can see that time, I hit it much more positively by hitting a little bit higher and you can see the way the white has just come back just that little bit now and that's left me a perfect shot on the brown. So what you're trying to do on those shots, because they're in the middle of two shots really, you're trying to just hit a little bit higher on the white which generates less backspin on the white and then that allows you to hit a little bit more positively, hit the shot with proper authority, go through to the chest like we're always talking about and control the white more effectively. Now, what I wanted to show you in this video is how this kind of shot crops up all around the table. So you can see that I'm faced with this red to the middle here, and I'd love to bring the white back just a little bit and leave the pink into the corner. But you can see I've got the same problem here where I've got a really small area to land the white good. So if I underdo it, I'm not gonna be on the pink. If I overdo it, I've come back too far. So if I was to get down to this and I underdo the shot slightly, so if I don't quite get enough screw on this, so you can see that I've potted the ball, but nowhere near on that pink there. That would be extended rest and all kind of things. So now I'm gonna try and do it and I'm gonna overdo it slightly. So down to the shot again. But if I get into it, and you can see I've just got into it slightly too much and not left a good shot on the pink. So we've got the same thing that we just talked about. We could control it by not doing pure screw like I was just doing there. Let's talk about what we just did. Let's go a little bit higher and see if we can get nicely on that pink. So, down to the shot again, and let's go a little bit higher on the white. And you can see that time, I've managed to control it by not coming back too far. Left a, a good shot on the pink there to the corner. So, 
The other thing to consider, and this is what snooker players are always doing, and this is really important here, this is why actually, if there's an alternative, I wouldn't even play for the pink there because you're holding yourself to standards that are too high. You're asking yourself to land the white in a window that's really, really small when we've got an alternative. So let's say, instead of playing for the pink here, I just screw back and I'll bring the white into this big area here and just leave myself a shot on the black. That's far more reliable because as soon as I play a screw shot, I can land anywhere from about here all the way to here and still leave myself a shot on the black. So how high my standards have got to be in terms of executing that shot reliably and nowhere near held to that same high standard. So if I just commit now to, okay, I'm playing this shot and I'm going to play screw back. And I've potted that. And like I say, I'm definitely going to leave a shot on the black. I can't fail there. When you're in and amongst the balls, you'll certainly have lots of reds dotted about there, lots of options. But if you can avoid it, snooker players are avoiding that shot for that exact reason that the standards, the, the margin you've got is really, really tight. So try and pick a different shot. You could also there, potentially even, if I was on that shot, you know, maybe even there's an argument here for, I could even go up for the blue here. So I pot this red and just let the white go up for the blue. Again, I'm not having to put any timing in on that shot because that shot is just a rolling shot. There's no timing of the screw shot to do. It's just all about pace. I'm hitting just above centre, letting the white go forward for the blue. So just think about that as well, leaving yourself in different areas where your margin of error is much, much bigger. So as always, I really hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to give the video a like. Also, if you're new to the channel and you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing because that just really helps me to keep all this content coming. I'm also really excited now that April the 12th is the date I've got for resuming my personal one-to-one -one coaching sessions on the table. So for anyone that's interested in that, you can visit my website at www.bartonsnooker.co.uk. There's a contact form on my website there that you can fill in to contact me, or you could send me a message on WhatsApp as well. So as always, everybody, thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.